Carlson. You're a retired Marine Lieutenant General. Do you support Senator Tuberville holding up these nominations? At this point, the answer is yes, because we have a couple of unanswered questions, and that's what the Senate does. Will we get to where we need to be with confirmations? I believe we will, but only, only if the White House and President Biden, whoever is running the leadership team over there, come to grips with what the realities are of the future of the military and the defense of our country. You say that the most dangerous recession might not be economic. That's what you wrote. Congressman, I know there's a shortfall in military recruitment, but does it amount to a huge threat to our society? Well, the short answer is it only depends on, you think about the law of supply and demand when you talk about recessions and economics. The fact of the matter is, if all of a sudden we have a great demand and we have a short supply of trained men and women in uniform, we could have a problem. But the point is, the military recruiting is down because of a couple of things. Number one, the American people have lost some faith in the leadership here in D.C. And that in involves part of the Department of Defense. I had breakfast this morning with a family of four teenagers who will be age eligible within the next three years. And they're concerned that the military that their son and daughters would go into is not the kind that they would want them to be to be good public servants in uniform. Well, so when you say it's not the kind of military that they would want to go into, are you talking about the effort to, to bring woke to the military? Or some kind of some kind of or abortion rules within the military. Is that what you're talking about? I, on both of them, but especially the woke, the woke uh, nature. Young boys and girls uh, look for something greater than themselves, and they're aspiring to be something greater. The military, and I'm a marine. Let's face it. Yeah. We uh, we are not known for our flexibility when it comes to. We joined to fight that we're the only service that still looks young men and women and their influencers in the eye and say, we're recruiting you for one reason, to fight for and defend our nation. And these young men and women who are, would sign up for that, they want to make sure that they, somebody's got their back here in D.C., especially in the Pentagon. And we're not a social experiment, right. experiment in the military, never have been. But there are people who would like to make us one, and that's morally wrong and it, it's security wrong. Sir, so I, I get the impression that aggression, which in my opinion is very necessary in a soldier, is frowned upon these days. Am I right? Yeah, there's uh, several good clips out there that show, show uh, basic training behavior that involves things like pugil sticks for those who know who they are. And uh, it's not gender specific, it's not race specific, it's just two people going after one another. And that's the way life is, especially in the military. It's the worst of mankind's behavior to have to go to war, but it brings out the best in people when they are trained and ready to fight and win. 30 seconds left, sir. Can you tell me how you will improve and boost military recruitment? Well, number one, each service must have that culture that shows that they are a warfighter, whether it's in the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Army, the Air Force, the Space Force, they need to show and stand up for the fact that they're not going to kowtow to any particular special interest. They're recruiting and training warriors to fight. That builds confidence in the future of our young men and women and their parents. Congressman Jack Bergman, Republican from the state of Michigan. Thanks very much for joining us, sir. Um, thank you. It, it, you're a Marine, and we thank you for your service. Uh, thanks very much indeed. I'm trying to say it eloquently, and it's not coming out right, but you're a great guy. <laughs>